Well, <laughs> I just I just keep learning as I go. You'll notice the sound quality is probably getting a little better because the last video, which I'm not going to re-record, I didn't have the phone setting. I thought it would use the external mic automatically. Obviously, if you're going to plug it in, I thought it would. Anyway, let's not go there. Okay, so this is the final uh, gear video, I think, except for when I'm loading the car. Uh, I didn't finish the squirrel story. I can't believe that. Anyway, I came out of the ranger station, and uh, so there's this squirrel, you know, in the last video. You'd have to watch the last video to know what I'm talking about. But uh, and here I am. I'm going to backpack a, a 10 days at Isle Royal, man. I, I'm not going to see another living human being. Probably, and I didn't for about the first five or six days. Anyway, <laughs> all you could see was this little gray tail sticking up out of the side pouch of my backpack. Little bastard had gotten down in there. He, he tore in and ate, ate a lot of my trail mix. I mean, I, now I'm not going to eat it after his teeth have been all over. I don't know if the guy's got rabies or what. I mean, he probably was safe, but so, I mean, there went a, a nice portion of my food. So just to tell you how the animals, I mean, I don't, I don't know how he unzipped the pocket. I mean, little bastages are smart, man. You got to give them, give the animals credit. So let's get into some of the camping aspects of the trip. This is that two person tent I was telling you about. Now, you ain't gonna backpack that unless you're camping in really cold weather. Then you would you would backpack this tent, but you're not gonna go out for eight, 10 days, you know, with this in your pack unless you just, you know, short hikes maybe. Uh, once again, getting back to camping with Steve. Boy, I tell you, the guy needs to pay me. I'm promoting everything. But anyway, when he starts a fire, he carries this one of them big propane tanks with him when he goes camping. And when he hits it, man, it's like this huge blowtorch comes out, and the fire, of course, just ignites right away. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious to watch. I don't know how he doesn't set the whole forest on fire. But uh, I, I have a different method. I just take a um, little charcoal lighter fluid by the way once again man stores are running out of this stuff i couldn't find it uh, i finally found it at home depot and the price had gone way up in other places so i was glad to get it i went ahead and bought two i, I don't use it except for when i go camping for the most part i have a gas grill um and then what i do is i carry one of these uh, fire logs you can buy these i assume you could still get them at like ace hardware or whatever you know what i'm talking about they're chemical chemical logs and uh, you just spray lighter fluid on these and then put your wood around it and you know you don't need anything else boom you got a fire you know why work hard you know you're gonna sit there and blow on pine needles <laughs> you know if they, nah you know and everybody says oh you got to be careful with the lighter fluid it's explosive no it's not you're fine um you know of course when you're camping you got to take something i usually i used to bring all my magazines you know kiplingers and stuff like that well i've had enough of that crap i i've been preparing you know our finances and everything because you know who knows where the world's going i mean things are just so crazy so i wanted to make sure every all my eyes are dotted t's across i'm going to read a stupid fantasy novel by robert jordan called knife of Knife of Dreams, thousand page book, and uh, I, I'm just gonna kick back. I just wanna forget about, yeah, that's what's beautiful about, about backpacking camp, and you just put the world aside. But you gotta be able to do that, you know? That's why these trips take so much time, so much planning. And of course, my reading glasses, because I'm getting old and blind. Um, here was another thing, you know, I bought for this trip. Uh, I have a um, uh, golf umbrella. But uh, the new ones, man, these things are really awesome. I mean, they've got the, the, the double layer. Now, I have a triple layer umbrella for golf. But uh, this thing, man, the guy's standing in a wind tunnel. The wind's blowing 60 miles an hour, and he's holding on to it. It's got all sorts of special reinforcements, and uh, you can find, well, whatever umbrella you want on YouTube. But, uh, you know, they're not that expensive. But I figured if it starts raining and I want to get out and do some walking around and stuff, hey, nice to have an umbrella. Um, Another thing I found, uh, I've had a hard time with radios. Uh, I bought a couple, um, you know, emergency radios, you know, they got the, the solar panel on top and all that, and they couldn't pick up. I mean, I don't know whether I'm just in a dead zone here in Florida, but they couldn't pick up radio stations, and when you heard the weather, it was like, you know, and you can't even understand what the guy's saying for the weather forecast, so if it was, you know, an alert or whatever. But this thing is, uh, this is the Seagram uh, public uh, alert. Radio um, or Sanjin, S-A-N-G-E-A-N, 
Uh, it took me a long time to find this radio. Man, the reception quality on this thing is outstanding. It's got the alert, so if I've got some really bad weather coming in and it'll let me know, I can even set the alert so that I can just set it on the picnic table and it'll, it'll switch over from the radio into the uh, weather alert. You know, things like little stuff like this, man, can save you a whole lot of grief on, on, a, on a trip like this. Um, Walmart's got this trail mix, once again, you know, they put sugar in it. Why the hell are you going to put sugar in it? You know, if you got raisins in here and cranberries, you don't need sugar, man. But I tell you, I have a hard time finding trail mix that doesn't have sugar in it. They just, that's, the, that's the whole thing about all this processed food. Everybody wants to put sugar in every gosh dang thing these days, and it doesn't make sense. You know, pretzels, I wanted a nice hard container. I went with the, with the Uts. Uh, check this out, man. This is, this is new. I, uh, I always had a backpacking fishing pole and what, you know, was in a, one of them flimsy plastic tubes and man, that thing, it might have lasted two trips before I broke the sucker right in half. I mean, you know, the reel was still good. I still got the reel. But, you know, and then what was I going to buy another one of them flimsy poles and everything? So then, you know, you're looking around and man, I tell you, you can find some really good stuff. Check this thing out. It's got everything in here. It's got the pole, which, you know, extends. It extends pretty dang, daggone long. Uh, the fishing line, you got your reel right here. It's even got a bag of lures uh, and weights and everything that you need to put some worms on there or whatever. Um, all in one little <coughs> carrying case for camping. I mean, no more uh, tube with the, with the backpack pole or any of that crap. Um, just thought I'd show you some of the snacks that I carry, you know. This is high energy, once again, sugar, sugar, sugar. Uh, you know, pack some walnuts. Uh, this was another bag of pretzels. I'm not taking these, because what happens is with these bags, because I couldn't find this. I was having a hard time getting this, because they kept saying they were out of stock, but finally Walmart got it in. But yeah, with these bags like this, you know, you'll just, you set something on top of it, and boom, you know, you, you, you got a dust bag, which you could still eat, but, you know, and then of course you gotta get your Cheetos and peanuts and, uh, Man, I gotta have my Cape Cod chips, you know. Uh, and then of course box crackers, you know. These are these are nice to have for camping when you're doing day hikes, man. You just throw them. I got a I got a day hike pack. It's a little blue pack that doesn't weigh squat, you know. And I just throw whatever I need in there and some water, uh, and maybe my camera, uh, which I haven't shown you. I got a camera in addition to the phone. We'll we'll get some pictures of that when I'm out on the trail. Um, man, gotta have fig newtons, you know. Uh, and then, of course, another box of trail mix that I can add to, to this when this runs dry. I'll just keep this in the car. So, anyway, just kind of kind of showing you how I pack. Uh, you know, back here, if you kind of look, you know, I got a cooler, a pop, a uh, box of wine, uh, some Dr. Pepper, and then a couple other coolers. I load them up. I took, of course, you got to have some beer. I mean, you know, and then what I'm going to do with my Ventura cooler I told you about in the first video. Um, I'm gonna load that thing with two 20 pound, 22 pound bags of ice, and uh, that'll be that'll be enough ice for 15 days. I'm not gonna be out 15 days. I'll probably be only be on eight days on the way up to Virginia, and maybe 10, depending on how much hiking I do. And uh, hey, that's it, man. That's it for the gear. I'm, I'll just show you when I'm packing the car. <clears throat> I think you, I'm sure I missed, you know, 10, 15 items. Oh, geez, yeah, I did right here, sitting right in front of me. Most important thing, man. I. This is why I made this, this video in the first place. Is this, this is the first aid kit. Um, you know, you're gonna want some, some anti-diuretal tape, uh, some uh, Blistex for your lips, some foot powder, uh, any uh, uh, nitrogen or neosporin, I'm sorry, antiseptic cream, some alcohol wipes. Uh, then I always take a little game kit. Uh, of course, with the virus and everything, I may not be playing Yahtzee with anybody, but I'll take it anyway. Sunglasses, a little memo pad, so you can take some notes if you need to. Um, and then, of course, band-aids. So you've got a variety of sizes in here. You want to get the blister buster band-aids, not just the, the regular. The blister buster band-aids, they'll stay on and uh, do a good job. And they also have uh, some antiseptic built into the Band-Aid uh, for, for any raw areas or a cut or a scrape that you get because, you know, a scrape or a cut on a backpacking trip can turn in turn septic on you, man. You got to be really careful and keep that area sanitized. Uh, and then, of course, uh, triple antibiotic cream. And then I always use these, these lightweight, see these bags. Once again, man, you got something small like this sitting out, the animals are going to grab it.
I'm telling you, so that's why I've combined it all. I mean, squirrel's gonna have a hard time carrying this, this whole bag away, you know, and so I don't, you know, usually I don't break these bags open until I'm in the tent or, you know, I'm gonna be right there with it. You know, certainly don't leave the items laying around. Uh, so that's it, man. Hey, peace, you guys.